This is what we get in the box. Uh, in typical AEV form, you're going to find a downloadable instruction guide. I'm pretty much going to be using that as my guideline for this install. But you'll have all the primary parts here. Uh, we've got the main snorkel, uh, the parts that sit on the outside of the vehicle, and the snorkel inlet that goes into the inside of the fender. Uh, we have the attaching component here. So this would attach to here, and that's going to guide into our air box. And we have the upper snorkel inlet, and this is going to be the piece that sits highest and, of course, captures the air to direct it down the snorkel leg. So we'll go ahead and do that download and take a look at what's inside this box. With our packing material removed, we've got our main hardware kit, and we're going to see the clamp for the top. This is going to be a black clamp, so I'm assuming that's going to be up here for the top of the snorkel to keep that all nice and clean. Uh, we do have a stainless worm gear clamp, a couple of rivets for the brackets, a couple of pieces of hardware, the bracket to mount to the A-pillar, the bracket to mount to the inside of the fender well. And probably the most important part here, this is going to be our cutting template. So once we get this laid out on the vehicle, we're going to make sure that we cut all the holes in the proper places and get everything mounted. First thing we have to do is get this inner fender liner off. There's a couple screws up here and we'll pull the center out and get the back two done. Uh, that's what it is for the Highmark style fender flare. The rest of it here is going to be pulling apart the outer bolts and if you have a regular bison it's just a snap in with some screws on the bottom and of course a ZR2 without the bison package will be just a little bit different. You just have to pull all the pops out and get that liner loose and that's going to allow us to pull that fender flare completely off. Underneath that we're going to want to go ahead and clean up while we're in the area but also the immediate area above it where we're going to put down the template. We have this little sound deadener that's on the inside of the fender. We're going to want to remove that because there's a future step where we have to gain access to a bolt there. Once we have that template laid out, we want to make sure that we really align to the A-pillar and the door. And once we're comfortable, we're nice and flat, we're going to go ahead and use our center punch here on the six large holes and punch those out. We also have two more, one to the left and one above, and those are for the other three-eighths holes to mount the snorkel to the body fender. With that all set, we're gonna to check to see how those punch through and immediately start with some pilot holes. I like to start with a smaller hole to get all the way around before going to the 3 8 which will be the top and the bottom. Uh, those will get to the actual bolt size that we need. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my 7 8 inch hole saw here and cut those six primary holes. Uh, once those go through the pilot hole, just don't put too much pressure or speed. You don't wanna bend that fender. Uh, let the cutting tool do its work here and cut through those six holes. And with those six holes removed, we're gonna get ready to move on to the next step here. Now we're gonna go ahead and lay some tape out to create the cut line. And this is just gonna be across the tangents of the circles that we've just cut out of the fender. Here, just spend your time making sure that you have a nice line between those tangents on the circle. And you can either transfer that, or in my case here, I'm simply gonna use the tape as my guide when I use the air reciprocating saw here and cut between each of those uh, six holes. Take your time again, uh, depending upon the tool you're using, this to me is one of the easiest. It introduces to the least amount of heat, and it's the same thing I use to put the Highmark fender flares on. If you do opt for some kind of a, a cutoff wheel, just keep in mind that the material that's coming off is uh, something that can damage the windshield and other plastics. It is very hot, so uh, put up some kind of a blanket to catch that. And also pay attention to the fact it can burn the paint around that, and you're going to want to take all of that burnt paint off, uh, making sure that uh, that area is going to be sealed up so we don't introduce any rust. Now back to what I'm working on here. As you can see, before I make my last cut, I like to put a couple pieces of tape in there. Uh, to keep that panel from falling inside and it's mainly because knowing me I'll probably grab it and poke my hand or something but take your time on this part uh, this is something where you're gonna definitely want not to make a mistake uh, there's a little bit of a margin of an error if you do however if you take your time here and transfer this back to our template you should be able to see that the template works very well in doing what you need to do here which is make an accurate hole and just again take your time make sure it turns out right here, I also recommend spending a little bit of time deburring the area we just cut. You're going to be sticking your hand in and out of here, and the plastic snorkel is going to go through. So just make sure it's not something that's going to either cut yourself or damage the plastics on the snorkel. Now that we're ready to move on to putting our rust inhibitor on, we want to use some degreaser here and make sure that it's going to stick well. We also have all of that metal there. We don't want to push that into the paint when we're doing the tape-off lines. 
do a little bit of masking. I usually like try to use between a quarter and a half inch for the area around. And we wanna make sure we mask off anything from any overspray. While I'm applying this, you're only gonna see the one coat here. I actually like to do two or three and let it dry. But you're gonna do light dusting to make sure we cover all of the area where there's exposed metal. And don't forget, we have raw metal on the inside edges. So make sure you get some of that rust inhibitor on that inside edge as well. Once everything's dry, we'll go ahead and peel back any of that masking we've put up to keep the overspray down. And we're gonna go ahead and move to the under hood portion of this where we've gotta do a little bit more cutting for the air box and a little bit more masking and painting as well. This step is gonna look a little different if you don't have the supercharger. Obviously, this only has two quick worm gear clamps to remove to get the boot off in a non-supercharged application. You're gonna have that big air box and the engine cover to remove, but that's basically the same. Next, unplug the mass air sensor and set that wire aside. And let's take the main screws off the side of the air box here. We're gonna lift that up. This might look a little different as the PCV system with the supercharger is slightly different, but all we need to do is get the air filter out and we can set aside the upper part of the air box so that we can get to the bottom, which is really what we need to work on next. Here we have two bolts. You can see the one here next to the three wires for my winch, the other one there, and that's just gonna be a 10 millimeter and that will release the lower suction of the air box. And remember with the two bolts that you have that you're removing from the front, there's gonna be a third kind of snap that holds it into a rubber grommet in the bottom. Firmly pull up and you'll feel that release. But before you can pull the box out, you're gonna see me with my thumb here in the background pushing down on that inlet that passes through the fender. You're gonna to need to release that and push that out of the way of the box to remove it. That gasket pass-through can be discarded. We're not gonna reuse that. We're gonna to have to actually enlarge this hole. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna to have to make measure up about a half an inch above that line and we're going to extend that hole up. The secondary part of the snorkel that comes from the A-pillar into the fender and from the fender into the air box requires us to kind of twist it into place and there's not enough room here. So usual thing with cutting, we're going to go ahead and mask off the areas that we want not to cut and we're going to go ahead and use that same air saw. That's the easiest way to get into this area for me and I'm gonna cut out that area and then grind it down a little bit and then blow out all the shavings. And we're gonna immediately prep for putting on our rust inhibitor. As you can see by the amount of mud and water that's on my reservoir behind me there, uh, this area does get exposed to moisture. So we wanna make sure that any of those cut areas, we mask off the area around it and make sure we cover a good amount of the material that we've exposed as raw metal. And again, just to keep things neat and clean here, uh, make sure you use uh, some paper or something like that to kind of manage your overspray and apply some of that same rust inhibitor we used on the outside. And that's gonna be the last of the painting and cutting we're gonna do. So clean up the areas around, cap off any of the uh, critical areas where you don't want dust or metal particles to go in and blow it off because all of this area will be covered up very shortly. Now we need to work on getting the snorkel into the inner fender and to do that, we have to release the inner fender from the outer fender and this bolt releases the two. There's also a plastic insert here that's in the way of the path of the snorkel and this is in fairly firmly. You're gonna see me kind of fumble through this because the instructions aren't very clear as to how this pops out and I've discovered that there are two pins that pass through the inner fender. I'll show you those in more detail. The outside edge is actually glued to the inside of the outer fender and what you wanna do is make sure that you don't manipulate this so much that you bend the fender well. Looking at the piece now, you can see the lower pin, but the top one broke off. Doesn't matter, we're not gonna need it. But this is where the lower pin went in and this is where the upper pin went in. So you may have to pry on those to get that completely out. Now that lower hole is where we're gonna put one of the nut inserts to hold that snorkel as it passes through the fender. So they provided us with the tool and basically using a ratchet and something to hold the base of the tool, we're gonna set that nut insert into the inner fender and pull out the bolt here and it'll be ready to put a bracket on so that we can mount that snorkel. Now we're gonna leave the inner fender well and start working on the A-pillar and the mount for the snorkel on the top of the vehicle. And we need to measure out our eight and seven eighths mark. And what you're gonna see me do here is place a piece of tape at that location. This is something you're gonna see me measure and measure again. Obviously this is an exposed area of the vehicle. I wanna make sure absolutely that what we do here is 100% accurate. And now I can take the bracket that mounts the snorkel to the A-pillar, lay it down nice and flat. I'm gonna press on both the inside and the top surface here to make sure it's seated well. And I'm gonna mark each one of the four holes. I'm gonna spend my time here making sure that my marks line up correctly. And before we do any drilling whatsoever, you're gonna see me do a test fit. This next step is not a requirement, but it's something that I need to do to feel comfortable that I've made all of my holes correct. And again, this is a double check, so it's up to you whether you wanna do the same thing. 
So here you can see I'm trying to release the lower part of the outer fender so that I can squeeze the round portion of the snorkel in. Basically that's going to require us to pull this lower portion out actually beyond where the rock rail is and that will give us enough space to pop that lower round section in so that the snorkel fits easily on the top of that A-pillar. With it laying on top of the A-pillar, the next step for me to do is to grab that bracket. And really what I'm looking for here is to make sure that the two holes on the snorkel will line up with the slots on the bracket and make sure that the four dots I've put onto the A-pillar line up with the four holes that are on the bracket. Now that I feel comfortable that the snorkel is placed evenly across the fender and the holes are all lining up with what mounts the snorkel to the A-pillar and the A-pillar bracket to the snorkel, I can start to disassemble everything on the test fit here and move back to installing everything permanently. Now I'm gonna make a little bit of preparation for using a handheld pop rivet gun. Uh, this is something that I found when I'm using a stainless steel rivet, especially one of this size, you've got to apply a lot of force. And in the process of applying a lot of force, once that releases, when that rivet pulls through, there's a tendency for that gun to bounce around. Now, this close to the windshield, I'm concerned that if I can't control the rivet gun when it releases, that it might tap the windshield and crack the windshield. So I'm taking a little bit of extra precaution here to make sure that I'm providing somewhat of a dampener if it happens. Again, I'm gonna try my best to control the gun, um, but sometimes things happen. Additionally, I'm putting a little extra around the area that's painted, albeit this is gonna be covered by the snorkel. I don't wanna scratch and expose anything to any kind of uh, potential rust if the paint is removed by the rivet gun landing on a painted surface. So again, this is something that I do as a precautionary measure just to make sure that I don't damage something. If you are using a pneumatic or an air pressurized type of rivet gun, you're gonna find that this is actually quite easy and you won't run into the same problems. Now I'm going to grab my center punch and mark each one of the four holes and prepare for a pilot hole. As per usual, I'm going to use a smaller than normal drill here and just making sure I don't pass through any more than just the upper layer. Because we're using a surface rivet here, we don't need to drill through anything other than the top layer. So be careful with the amount of force you're putting on the drill. Let the drill do the work and just get in there about a quarter inch deep so that the drill doesn't damage the underside area. Once we've done that, I'm gonna step up to the appropriate size drill and try to remain as perpendicular as possible as to make the hole as tight as I can because we don't want the hole to be too big, then the rivet might work its way loose. So once I've drilled all four of the holes, I'm gonna put the bracket up and insert the rivet head into each of the four holes, making sure that they fit appropriately, just snug enough where they pass through, and then I'm gonna to start to prep the work area. I just realized that my protective tape and cardboard was a little too close to the work area and once the bracket is permanently mounted is going to interfere so I've got to take up some of that tape and rearrange it so it's a little further away but I still want to make sure that I have that safety net in case that rivet gun does lose my control and bounce off of any of the surrounding areas. Now I'm going to place a rivet in each one of the holes in the bracket and use that to locate the bracket. This will make sure that this bracket doesn't drift with any of the other holes being set while I'm putting a lot of pressure on the one rivet I have in the pop rivet gun. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the pop rivet gun, uh, align that one rivet into the hole, and squeeze the handle to pull the rivet through. I'm gonna repeat that process three more times. I'm gonna get the other lower one here, move on to the upper one on the flat panel, and then finish off with that fourth rivet. If you notice, when I am squeezing, I am also pulling back to make sure that if the gun does bounce, it is gonna pull away from the vehicle and not cause any damage. I know I've talked about it quite a few times here, but it would make it completely worthless if I damaged the windshield or damaged the painted area, and I could have just gone out and rented a new mask rivet gun but here everything was successful so I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of my uh, rivet gun countermeasures off and we'll be ready to move on to the next step something you're gonna have to pay attention to if you're running a ditch light you're gonna have to check your clearances every one of the ditch light brackets has a different mounting angle and mounting point uh, I took a couple of quick eyeball measurements when I was putting the snorkel up to the area and I know I'm going to have to loosen this up so now's a good time to go ahead and pull that out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of the snorkel setting properly against the fender and speaking of the snorkel, now we've got to start prepping the inner fender well for the final mounting. And for that, we have a bolt that has to pass through this bracket, which mounts the midsection of the snorkel inside the fender well. Now we have to get the lower air box placed back into its home. We've got those two studs sticking up in the front that have the 10 millimeter nuts on the top. We need to make sure those are aligned. And then we have that third little push-in plastic grommet that's in the back. 
And once those were all in place, we're gonna go ahead and put the nuts in and lock it down. And we'll be ready to move on to getting the snorkel fed through the inner fender into the air box. That snorkel tube is gonna require we put this little piece of rubberized foam tape on it. And as you can see, when I go to install this, this is the piece that faces the inside of the outer fender. This just prevents the metal from rattling against the plastics directly and puts a little bit of a buffer and a cushion there. The most important part about this step is feeding this tube through the square hole you've enlarged on the inside of the inner fender. It is definitely doable with one person, but it will require you hold it in place and kind of check where the tube is going through. And what you'll find is on the outside, you're gonna to have to exert a little bit of force to pop it into place. And as you can see, once that tube goes into place, it'll definitely hold against the inner fender. And all you've got to do now is align it with the square hole inside the lower air box and make sure that everything is set in the proper position. Now we can go ahead and lock this tube in. That bracket we put in from the bottom has another 10 millimeter bolt that passes through into the snorkel tube. And we're gonna to wanna to thread that in. Be careful not to over tighten it because it is a brass fitting inside of a plastic tube. Now we're gonna work our way back to the engine compartment and finish locking down that lower part of the air box. We're gonna drop in a fresh air filter and then we've gotta to get to the two lower 10 millimeter nuts here and get that lower box bolted in. Once that box is bolted in, we'll tighten up those nuts and move on to getting the upper lid placed. With the upper lid pushed into the back slots and pushing down on the lid assembly, we're gonna go ahead and get that bellows tube that connects the air box to the front of the throttle body. Again, if you have a non-supercharged application, this is simply taking that engine cover outlet, which comes from the manifold and passes over the top of the engine and connecting the bellows back to the air box. With everything loosely attached in the bellows, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down the upper lid to the lower portion of the air box. And for the next step here, you're gonna see me working with some PCB lines. Again, this is unique to the supercharged application. And all that we have left is plugging in the mass air sensor. Once that's plugged in, we're gonna go ahead and move on to tightening everything down. So I'm just gonna take a flat blade here and tighten the bellows in place. And this should make sure that there's no air leaks. Now that we've got the hood down, I can go back to readdressing the issue with the ditch lights. Here, I'm gonna grind out about a 3 16 to quarter inch slot into the material that's there so that I can reinstall the Baja Design Squadron and orient it in a fashion that doesn't hit the snorkel. So here we are, we're at the final phases of installation here. Hopefully all the work we've put into this and the prep should make this a really easy drop in. I'm gonna start with the bottom here, pull that fender out so that this drops in quite easily and paying attention to where the outlet meets the intermediate tube and making sure that the two holes on the A-pillar line up to the snorkel. Here it looks like everything fell into place just as it's supposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the inner fender in, take a look and make sure that the tab on the inside of the inner fender is lined up. And let's take a look at just how well this fits the body. Here you can see that the two bolt holes line up as we expected, but we took the precautionary steps of doing the pre-fitting. And now you can see that the body of the snorkel fits tightly against the fender and we have clearance for our ditch light. So now we're gonna go ahead and mount that assembly to the fender. There's those two 3 8 holes we drilled in the beginning that were outside of the six main holes for making the port for the snorkel assembly. And now I'm gonna go ahead and finger tight that one 10 millimeter on the inside. This is the one to the left of the snorkel body. And with that finger tight, I'm gonna move up to the A pillar and get the two torque screws put in place. None of this is gonna be final tightened at this time because we do have one more bolt that we have to gain access to by lifting the hood and going through the area where the hood hinge is. This is the most difficult bolt to get to and will require that you have a 10 millimeter ratcheting style boxed in wrench. Moving back to the inner fender area, we have one bolt here that attaches the inside of the fender well to the outside fender. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that the body line lines up and tighten this down. And then we're gonna replace the sound deadening material. The sound deadening material does have a stud that passes through a hole here, so I am gonna line that up. That's the same bolt we just put into place, and we have a little plastic retainer that'll go right over the stud. Now we're gonna go ahead and put that fender flare back on, and whether you have the standard ZR2 flare, the ZR2 Bison flare, or a Highmark equipped vehicle, we're gonna go through the removal process that we just did in reverse, and now reapply all the hardware to mount that if it snaps on the Bison, or if it snaps on the standard ZR2, or in this case, using the bolts that are provided for the Highmark, we're gonna reapply those and then push our inner fender liner back into place and finish up with the last few screws on the inner fender well. Well, we're here at the final step, which means we're putting the inlet on the snorkel and they've supplied a nice heavy duty clamp that's a black plastic instead of the typical worm gear. This is something on the newer ones. Basically, we're gonna lock that in place and we're pretty much done with our installation. 
Here's the final look. We've got the snorkel in place, and really, it's probably one of the least intrusive snorkels uh, out there. It doesn't cover the whole fender. When I'm sitting in the driver position, it's something that doesn't catch my eye. It doesn't obstruct any of my visibility, and for the most part, I can say I enjoy the sound that it makes, especially being a supercharged vehicle. I get a lot more of that blower whine, but ultimately, this is so that we can capture some clean air from driving behind other vehicles when I'm on the trail, and it really finishes off as the last piece I've needed to finish the ZR2 Bison's upfit to the full potential that AEV and GM worked out for the Chevy Colorado ZR2. Thanks for watching the channel and of course like and subscribe that will help me build future content for you guys and ultimately help expand what kind of things and projects I can do here on the channel.